Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to break down how I got Dark Matter. These are my stats uh, for when I finished the grind, about 51 hours of in-game time total. I did 437 games played, so not bad. I did play a little bit of Nuketown uh, after this, but uh, yeah, so I had a pretty decent amount of games played for the camos that I got. So we're going to start with assault rifles. Uh, assault rifles, there's no secret. Um, you just have to outskill your opponent. Um, if you play core, it's going to give you a lot more room to breathe because you'll be able to kind of just outskill people and heal. If you play hardcore, I think I only recommend hardcore for single shot weapons um, or players that maybe don't have the best aim because it's just easy to hit one bullet in the head. But if you're a good player, I recommend doing core. Um, playing regular game modes or Nuketown uh, will probably be the, the easiest thing in the world to do it in. Um, I also recommend for your class setups, if you're trying to be very aggressive and get this done quickly, use stim and then use three red perks. Um, this is going to allow you to be very aggressive. You're going to have multiple avenues of healing with the enforcer perk healing you after kills and giving you movement speed. And then stim also, you know, being able to heal you. So you'll just be able to kind of run around, um, focus on taking gunfights and uh, just healing. Um, you can also try using the CHF barrel and multiple assault rifles and stacking that with recoil attachments like recoil springs, vertical foregrip, and compensator to kind of make hitting the head a lot easier and, you know, essentially doing more damage. Um, I didn't do that because I did them all at a low level, um, weapon level. So, um, yeah, I pretty much just did that. Um, just stacked recoil attachments um, and just aim for the head and core. Um, outside of that, the, ma the goblin's the one that gave me the most trouble. Uh, I definitely did this gun in hardcore um, and I didn't play face off. I played regular hardcore maps because it is a bit of a ranged weapon. So you can kind of use it like a like a semi auto um, marksman rifle or like a sniper rifle in essence, where you're kind of just like keeping a little bit of space between your opponents and just trying to one tap them in the head. Um, when it came to the SMGs, I actually made a video on this, but play close range maps, try to get into people's faces, stack gunfighter, stack the same amount of perks. Um, and just spray and pray for the head. I think all of these guns were doable in core. Um, they're just really good in comparison to some of the other weapons that you'll use. Um, so do all of these in core. Um, for pretty much every challenge, you're going to want to do all of them in core. Um, if you want to speed up the process for some of these challenges, like hip fire kills, point blanks, and all that stuff, you can definitely do them on face off and kind of just barrel stuff people. Um, for shortly after sprinting, like this type of challenge, you're going to want to put on like fast hands or use perk read and use fast hands and just basically run around with your pistol. And then when you know you're going to anticipate enemies, um, you can weapon swap. I did not use the recon perk unless I played face off because that map is so small. Um, and it's really easy to see where players are, where players are funneling. Um, but outside of that, if I didn't play face off, I ran enforcer in regular maps and modes. Um, when it comes to the shotguns for all these, you're going to want to do them in core. The ASG you can do in hardcore face off because it's pretty much going to one tap um, from pretty far away, especially if you get stakeout. Uh, but the Marine, you want to do that in normal core face off, in my opinion, and try to force stake out. It's just it's going to one tap for the most part. And especially if you get slug rounds, uh, it's fucking insane. It's OP as hell. I think they fixed it. But um, yeah, this was definitely the way to go. You do this one in core and do this one in hardcore. Uh, that's pretty much it for shotguns. I'm trying to see if there's any actual like weird challenges that um, were around. Yeah, these are point blanks. You're just going to have to slide around. Stack movement attachments, stack sliding attachments, and just kind of slide around into people and hope you get point blanks. Um, one thing that I use to help close distance with the shotgun is I actually used uh, smoke grenades. And there's actually a route on face off where you go through the center of the map, especially if you have recon, you can kind of see if people are there. Go through the center of the map, toss a smoke grenade into their main like room where the sides of the spawns are and just go fucking buck wild in there. That's the best uh, advice I can give you um, for shotguns. LMGs, again, you can pretty much outskill people, um, at least with these two. The GPMG is pretty gar pretty garbage. I did this one in hardcore. You just basically have to just spray and pray, aim for the head, use recon, and just try to basically one-tap your opponents because the gun is, is pretty mid. Um, I forgot to mention this, but for the ranged weapons, if you guys want a little bit more room to breathe, try to get uh, the Nuketown variant of face-off. I forget what the map is actually called. Um, but it'll give you a little bit more space or gala. Uh, the close range maps definitely are better for the SMGs, shotguns, and I guess assault rifles. But if you need a little bit more space for the marksman rifles and LMGs, I suggest playing the other two maps. Um, but yeah, no real secrets here. 
just spray and pray aim for the head again you can do two of these in core just because they're not bad weapons and try to outscore your opponent like i said before uh when it comes to the marksman rifles again i did pretty much this i did this uh the aek and the swap both in core because they're very reliable one burst um and you could pretty much get the majority of your kills with those uh, but if you need headshots and you can't aim for the head then i would suggest doing these in hardcore just because again you're going to one tap and then instead of playing face off to get headshots, I recommend doing these in normal maps and modes, because, again, you can kind of camp, create some space, uh, specifically in domination where the spawns are pretty stuck and just hold angles and one tap people in the head with all of these uh, rifles. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing these in face off uh, unless you're unless you need regular kills for a challenge, because, again, it's good to have some space. When you end up when you end up finishing your headshots, the SWAT and the AEK are both good core guns. So uh, to finish your other special, your specials, your diamond, your gold, all that stuff, I would recommend doing these two weapons in core. But the other two definitely do them in hardcore. They're just not very good. The Sarkov, I guess you can kind of try to outskill your opponent because it is a one tap in the head in core. But again, it's going to just be harder with people moving around and you not being able to. Uh, to get those headshots but you can always use this gun in core to get headshots as well because you're again like i said you're gonna one tap people sniper rifles this is a tricky one a lot of people are like how do you get them uh, again since you can eat bullets in core play core and all you have to do is try to get spaced out maps like scud red card and things where players are kind of kept at a distance um, it's going to give you a lot more room to breathe. People are not going to be sliding around on you and you're going to be able to create some distance and, and pick people off of power spots like Scud in specific has a lot of power spots like that satellite or the sandbag area. So when people go up there, you're going to get a lot more headshots um, as opposed to smaller maps where people are running around. Try to farm and play for certain maps and you'll have an easier time uh, doing this. You can do this on Nuketown, too, because the lanes are pretty uh simple but again it's close range so if you play in a certain lobby you're going to get people running around and sliding around on you and you're not going to have a good time um that's pretty much the best advice i can give you outside of that i personally uh i like the scope on the frost line i like the scope on the lr the svd default scope i didn't really like too much so if you're having issues you can always play face off and use a red dot and again play the spaced off map spaced out maps and go for headshots there or you can maybe put on uh, like a 4X or a 3X scope if you have them unlocked and uh, go with there. The Remuda dual zoom is actually not a bad option either. Um, it's the closest thing to like a normal sniper scope because the Dragon off scope is just not the best in my opinion. Uh, but yeah. Uh, as for attachments, depending on how good you are at quick scoping, I recommend going for quick, uh, you know, quick aiming things. It's going to allow you to readjust your shots better. But if you're just going to hard aim down lanes, I suggest you stack, stack things like aiming idle sway. It's going to make it so you don't have to hold your breath as much. If you have a lot of aiming idle sway, um, you're going to basically have your laser stand like as still as possible or not your laser. Sorry, your sight stand as still as possible. And it's just going to be easier to hit because you're not going to get a lot of weapon sway. Look at that. You don't even have to hold your breath and it's relatively still um, as opposed to not having it. You're going to have to hold your breath a lot more, but it's just going to be way easier to hit when you don't have to hold your breath like that. So it depends on really uh, your strengths and weaknesses as a sniper. It's hard, but that's the best advice I can give you for those. Now, the ones I know you guys were all been waiting for. What did you do for the knife and the baseball bat? So for the knife, play core face off and farm stake out. Uh, it's not hard to get kills. And again, you're going to have bullets to sponge. So you're going to have a good time knifing people. Um, if you need perks to stack, I recommend using... Uh, whatever this is called. Sorry, let me put on perk read. So you're going to want to use, uh, not perk read. You're going to want to use, uh, where is it? Tactical expert. And that's going to allow you to have two smokes. So play core, run two smokes, put on a knife, throw smokes into their spawn and run around like a madman. And you're going to pretty much do this for all of the normal camo challenges. And then once you get special, the special camos, which are really easy, you're just going to do eliminations with a uh, enforcer combat specialty and get kills without taking damage. You're going to do the same thing. Uh, just run around until you get kills but then once you get to pretty much here here and here that's where it gets tricky you're just gonna have to go rogue these are harder to do this especially is very hard to do going on five sprees but it's the same concept you're gonna have to literally pop smokes in their spawn 
and just go rogue. Um, one thing that you can do to cheese this is try to queue into a game mode with your friend, like a free for all game mode or something. Queue snipe each other and maybe have them feed you kills if uh, you don't want to do it uh, the long way. This will be a lot easier, but it's pretty common that people do this stuff for super hard challenges. So I'm going to give you that advice anyways. Um, but yeah, this uh, the knife isn't too bad. The baseball bat. This is the one that everyone hates, and I'll tell you why. It doesn't one shot unless you're playing in hardcore. Um, however, some people don't even know this, but if you hit L1 or L2, depending on what you shoot and throw tacticals with and, and all that stuff or aim in, you're going to do a animation instead of a swing. And that animation, especially if the player is standing up, you will essentially lock them into an animation. And it's a short one, kind of like an assassination where you're guaranteed to get the kill. However, um, it does take some time to go off so you can get your kill stolen or you can get killed while performing the animation, but you're guaranteed to one shot them. So personally for kills, I would recommend doing this in core. A lot of the time in hardcore, you don't have time to get your bat up. And most of the time people are going to steal your kills um, because again, you die in a bullet. So I would recommend doing this in core face off pop smokes like I did for the knife and run around and spam L1. It's going to be the easiest thing to do to farm kills. Um, shortly after switching weapons, again, you're going to use fast hands and you're going to do the same thing that you did for the other weapons that require this. Just run around with your pistol. And when you get in, when you know you're going to get into enemy territory, just essentially hit, uh, hit your bat and then hit L1 and get a kill that way. You'll know you get the, the switching weapons, uh, whatever kill, because it will say hot swap as a metal. Also, one thing that I also didn't say um, for the double kills or better and all that stuff for these things that require you to get multi kills, triple kills, etc. is what I want you to do is if you'd like to go into private match or in any pub. And when you get a double kill, right, what I want you to do is wait. Once you get two kills, wait. And then when you see that double kill metal come up, that is essentially the timer being up or getting a triple kill or a blood or not bloodthirsty or like a quad kill or any of that stuff. The timer is relatively generous. So a lot of people, when they need double kills or triple kills, they think that they have to go kill by kill by kill, but you actually have a decent amount of time, especially if you test it and like see it for yourself um, in between kills to get doubles and triples. Um, so just keep that in mind for things like this or other challenges that require you to get like triple kills or, or anything like that, like this one, for example. Um, one way that I ended up doing this, and it was actually 2000 IQ. Um, this is this is the sauce right here. You can get camos in Infected. And when you spawn in on Infected, your default loadout has a baseball bat if you're not infected. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down here, best way to do this, and it's cheesy as hell, but it'll work. And it won't require you to sweat any more than you have to because this kit, this challenge in specific absolutely blows. Load up infected with five of your friends. I'm pretty sure you can go in with a party of six or go in with as many friends as you can. And you guys can do this together. Um, all they have to do is kill themselves as soon as they spawn and they will become infected. And then since you're in voice chat together, just have them meet you somewhere and try to run to you and camp. And then essentially you just beat them down with the baseball bat until you finish this challenge because it counts in infected. So I know technically it is kind of like a boosting for the camo, but bro, no one wants to waste time on this. It's an easy, cheesy tip. Um, so you guys don't have anything to worry about it. Just literally have your friends feed you kills um, because in infected, they can easily join the game with you. And uh, yeah, it's super easy to do that way because this challenge absolutely sucks. Uh, but I recommend doing this infected with friends. If you don't want to do an infected with friends, then you're probably going to have to suffer in core until you go on a five spree on stakeout by tossing a million smokes and praying you don't die. Anyways, um, now that we're done with the baseball bat and the knife, we're going to talk about the launchers. The Sigma is very easy just because it has a lock on. You're just going to kill a bunch of streaks or get kills um, direct hits. You're going to want to do this on stakeout. Um, it's just going to be very easy to get that launcher off and just basically try to tap people, especially using the recon perk. 10 aerial streaks, uh, just you're going to have to play either Nuketown or core game modes and then do the same thing that you did uh, every other game, shoot streaks down. Uh, three destructions in a single game. This and this are the hardest challenges, regardless of the launcher, because you essentially are hoping other players 
shoot or shoot or put streaks up in the air for you. So the best way to do it is just sweat your balls off until you get in a game with a bunch of players that are either as good as you or better than you and have them just absolutely slam you. If you uh, are playing in a game and you realize the enemy team is sweaty, just start feeding them kills and hope they get streaks. If you're playing in the game and the other team is full of bots, well, just keep frying because you need to get into a game with a lot of SBMM basically um, and get into the best game possible. It's going to be a lot of luck based stuff. It's just a matter of whether the enemy team is running streaks or not. Um, there's no secret to it, man. It's just, it's a lot of lobby farming or lobby surfing basically. Um, but that's pretty much it. There's nothing else you can really do about it. You just have to try to farm this stuff. And in terms of, uh, get five destructions in a single match three times, it's pretty much the same thing as this. Uh, but I think every score streak counts and I think the ammo packs and stuff like that count too. Uh, so you can always try that for the spine, spine camo. The HE1, it's the same thing. The, requ the requirements are no different. Um, however, you actually have to shoot these down manually. Uh, so I'm going to cut to some gameplay here where you guys can actually see how I shoot down the UAVs. I am going to miss once with the UAV, but I'm going to hit it the second time. And then the counter UAV, you can pretty much do every time. But again, a lot of luck. Uh, with when in terms of lobby surfing and there's no real secret to it you just have to kind of get good and it's just it's hard man these challenges i think some of them will probably get nerfed because some of these are kind of absurd uh in the future but if you guys are impatient you guys are on these steps well good luck and i hope you guys uh you know get that camo so i'm gonna cut to some gameplay and show you guys how to do the he1 and then that's gonna be it for the video all right so in order to shoot the uavs down you're gonna want to line up the scope with the front of the uav and get as close as you can underneath it it's really tricky depending on the angle of the streak but you want to get as close as you possibly can line it up with the top of the streak pull ahead and then shoot and if done correctly you're gonna hit it it takes a couple tries sometimes but it's just the way these streaks are. There you go. So calling the counter UAV now. Counter UAV follows the same thing. Get ahead of it, but it's a bigger one. So it's you don't really have to pull so far ahead because it moves so slow. So just ahead, pull ahead and shoot and it'll hit it. It's just, it's hard, but that's like the best method I could. Just try to use the crosshairs on the left or right to get ahead of the UAV. The counter UAV just a, just a little bit ahead and then maybe like another finger space ahead with the uh, normal UAVs. Uh, this was not a fun grind. It was pretty monotonous and it was uh, a lot of work. So good luck. See you guys in the next video.